Hey, I'm Ian with the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. I'm a field technician on our Burmese Python research project, and I'm here to show you that they're as cool on the inside as they are on the outside. So when we're in the field and we're capturing pythons, one of the first things that we need to know is whether or not that python is a male or a female. And there's one quick and easy way that you can tell. So the best way is to grab a hold of the tail um, and take a look. They actually have vestigial back legs. So Burmese pythons, um, like uh, many other pythons, uh, show off these sharp scales that we call the spurs that are actually remnants from when they had legs. Male pythons have much larger spurs in comparison to their body than females do. You can see that a female that is much larger than a male might have much smaller spurs in comparison to the male. Okay. All right, let's get started. All right, so now that we have the snake cut open, um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is take a look at um, the internal organs up here at the top. I have the heart, I have the liver, and I also have the lungs. So what I'm gonna look for in the lungs is actually a parasitic crustacean that sucks the blood out of the lungs. See anything in there? Yeah. Lung number And one thing with snakes, and you'll notice this as I go through, is they actually have one lung that is larger than the other. So most snakes only have one lung. Um, pythons, because they're such an ancient form of snake, have two lungs, but only one is functional. Both are used for air storage, so that they can hold their breath to dive underwater, or they can hold their breath to float on the top of the water um, like a raft when they're swimming. So it's like both of these. Looks like both are clear. So this python does not have any parasites in its lungs. Good. All right. Okay. So pythons like most other reptiles have a three-chambered heart, so you see one, two, and three. The only animal, or the only reptiles that don't have three-chambered hearts are crocodilians, like alligators and cro um, cro American crocodiles. So I have exposed the liver, which is the largest internal organ in the body, um, and it actually helps to digest food. The really incredible thing about Burmese pythons and other large constrictors is that actually when they're eating, when they've swallowed a prey item, their internal organs will physically grow in size to help them digest their food. So their liver will actually double in size inside the body cavity, and the heart might grow by as much as you know, 40%. So that too will almost double in size in order to help digest a large meal. <laughs> All right, now that we've checked out the lungs and looked at all the other internal organs, um, what we're going to do now is actually expose the reproductive system and the digestive system so we can take a look at that stuff. 
when I see all this fat tissue, this is all the animals that the python would have eaten uh, during the summertime, during the feeding season. That's all your rabbits, all your opossums, all your raccoons, bobcats even, maybe deer. Um, and all of those animals uh, were sacrificed in order to uh, raise this next generation of Burmese pythons. So the next thing that I'm looking at now are all of these big yellow blobs. And you may have guessed already, these are actually enlarged follicles and they're going to be the eggs of the Burmese python. So uh, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna count all of them on both sides so we'll know how many pythons that this female was gonna drop out in the Western Everglades. All right, so I counted them all up. Um, there's 17 on the right-hand side, 17 on the left-hand side, which means 34 total pythons in this one female. So I believe that is about average for this female size. Um, the average clutch that we noticed um, is 43 eggs. Um, the smallest we've ever seen was a seven foot, nine inch female that had 12 eggs. And the largest clutch that we've ever seen was a 17 foot female with 95 eggs in it. So you can see that these guys are reproducing at a very rapid rate. So I'm sure you guys are wondering what this big green blob is in the middle of the python. It's pretty hard to miss. This is actually the gallbladder which is an organ that uh, secretes a fluid called bile that breaks down fats. So all the fat inside of the raccoon or the possum that this snake was eating gets broken down using bile from this organ. We're gonna take a look at the digestive system. First thing I'm gonna open up here is the stomach. I'm gonna show you guys if it has anything inside or if not, I can at least show you the really cool adaptations of the stomach. When I open this up, you can see there's really nothing inside except for some gooey material. Um, all of these wrinkles inside, all these folds, will all expand when it swallows a large prey item. And so the, all these wrinkles here are just essentially for surface area. So this stomach is relaxed right now. Nothing inside. All right, last but not least, is the intestinal tract. Like most carnivores, they have really short intestines. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna squeeze all the contents to the end. We're gonna cut it open. We're gonna squeeze it into this bag that we call a whirl pack. We're gonna send it off to the University of Florida so they can identify the hair or any other remnants that we find inside of their intestines. You don't find a lot of bones um, inside the intestinal tract, most of what you find are hair and feathers, and that's because they're made of keratin, which is the same material that your fingernails are made of. Um, that stuff doesn't digest very well, and so these are the types of things that we can use to identify what pythons are eating out there in the ecosystem. So let's see, what do we got? Oh, brown goo. All right, so from what I can see, it's just unidentified digested material. Or one or two hairs in there. So there wasn't a ton of digested material in this snake, um, but we have found things in the past that are really interesting. For example, this. So this is a set of claws. They're actually from a large male bobcat. So we had a python that actually killed and ate a bobcat. Another thing that we keep finding in our really big snakes that, we, that we've been uh, collecting are hoof cores. So like I said, the, ker the keratin in hair and feathers doesn't digest as well as the stuff made, like their fingernails are made of, and that is a deer fingernail. It's just a lot of evidence to suggest that these guys are making a huge impact on the Western Everglades ecosystem. So the last thing we're gonna do is take a genetic sample from the liver 
cut a little piece off. We're going to take this and we're going to put it in this vial and we're going to send it off to another lab. See what information we can get from this. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot about Burmese pythons and snakes in general. If you'd like to learn more, you can come and visit the Conservancy Nature Center, as well as go to our website and learn more about our research and removal project.